friends and family, we are going to talk about the shooting that happened in Nashville a couple days ago. Um, it weighs beyond heavy on my heart. Um, I want all of you to know that um, not everybody is going to agree with my opinion today. I want you to know that I am drawing a line. I'm not going to fall back anymore. We made too many compromises already, too many retreats, and we fall back. Not again. People decide to basically try to pull me down off of off of uh, YouTube and Facebook, and just recently, quite frankly, I've barely posted anything and on any of the platforms, let alone anything offensive or whatever. But I'm still getting complaints on things from two years ago. Um, that means that, uh, well, it means a lot of things to me, but that means that I'm going to love on you a lot more. And I believe that love is objective and there's objective truth and not subjective truth. Some of the objective truth is extremely hard to handle. And one of the things that, um, if you followed me, obviously my family knows, but if any of you have followed what I do, very long my daughter died 10 years ago in a car crash that's the truth but the honesty with that truth is she was texting while driving it was her fault so you can say something that is true but you can also say something that is true and you can put honesty to it and I think that is the difference between subjective and objective truth I've decided that we're not going to necessarily pull up a whole bunch of articles and facts. This is a this is this is discussion and commentary. This is opinion. And like it or not, I want you to know that I love all people, all humans, but the actions that some people make, including actions that I've made in my life, I don't like. And we need to do better. We need to be better. We need to stop politicizing this stuff. We need to stop um, using this as clickbait we need to stop using this as a financial grift and just going where and being um, hyperbolic as we can and going places that no one should go no left or right or anything like that has a monopoly on feelings of kids that are shot and killed um, in a school that's nobody has the monopoly on on those types of feelings it, it hurts everybody I don't care who you are what your political standpoint is or any of that so it is done in that spirit it is done in that um, mindset of we need to look at the truth objectively welcome to the matt logan show so craig that's the intro pretty good intro um we all know about what happened it, you you'd literally have to be like encino man yeah um there's a lot of people like slamming Joe Biden for coming out and making ice cream jokes when he addressed it. There's a lot of things. And I, I think one of the things um, uh, Josh Hawley has come out and said that this is a hate crime um, be, for these particular reasons, blah, blah, blah. I believe personally this is a terroristic act. Um, I think crime against another person is hate, period. I don't think we should make all these subdivisions and side divisions and multiplications of all these different things. If you are um, doing something against another human being, I think it, it's hate anyway, but it's, but it's a crime. And it's cowardice. For sure. It's cowardice. Yeah. Um, realities are realities. We can't change them. We can't change things we there are things that feel a certain way whatever that does not make them real mm -hmm. you can feel like you're in the wrong body that does not make it real there's no hate here but Agreed. it doesn't make it real you can't say a 28 year old that went to school at this place well, for one, you're out of school now for 10 years. This was a school that I believe, if memory serves, went up to sixth grade. Mm -hmm. So she couldn't have been there. So 15 for years ago. Eight, yes, at minimum. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we know now the fact is, is that she chose this school because the security was lower versus another school. Mm -hmm. uh, I would, I would dare to guess that many of the people 15 years ago that supposedly hated on her is, uh, aren't even there, let alone the nine year olds weren't even born. Right. So. The line has to be drawn. I'm tired of falling back and saying, I think we talked on the phone, live and let live. Mm -hmm. I can't do that anymore. Not when it comes to stuff like this. No. Nope. This is close to home. This, this is, is very close to home. Yeah. Um, it's just despicable. And people using this, like you said, for po political gain, whether it's because they're anti-trans or anti-gun that's bs totally this is anti-humanity yeah and it's inexcusable how cowardly to go into a school and she broke into the school the school was locked um and to shoot and she shot out the door she shot out the door to get in and to shoot nine-year-old children and anybody else that and the three admin that got in her way so she could gun down three children mm -hmm. and how many more of if those police officers didn't react absolutely if and we we watched the video right before the this episode and they pulled up and they didn't flinch they grabbed their rifles and they got the doors unlocked and they they were going as fast as they could to get to the gunshots um anybody that comes at me with a defund police they can pound sand these are heroes it's not somebody that wears a certain color jersey at warm-ups that's not a hero these, no. guys, these police officers are heroes. Yes. Hands down. And I just, Those of I mean, you, I'm going to interrupt you, Craig. I just, I, I talked about this. I didn't think I was going to say this, but I want to say this. I, I, I want you, the viewer, the listener, um, to understand a couple, two, two main things. YouTube and Facebook have as Craig we've talked about recently have tried to demonetize me I've never monetized I've done this as I believe something for I've started out as as it's something for me to learn I want to learn and do better be better understand more and I've never attempted to monetize I th I've said I think I should attempt to monetize I mean um, maybe I could, maybe I couldn't. I don't know. That's not the point. The point is, is that it's been done as a um, learning process for myself. I've tried to learn and I've invited people of all races, um, all different types of religions, all different political viewpoints and all these things. But you people with the, the stupid Ukraine flag on an American, you Americans, with the stupid Ukraine flag on your pulse of any kind, you want to look at this, and let me give you some numbers. Roughly, and you can fact check this, it takes roughly about four... to protect our kids. If we got back the money that we gave to Ukraine, for what is going to be another Afghanistan endless war. And before long, if these, <sighs> Craig, I don't, I, I, I better be careful. <laughs> they might demonetize you. If these people that wish war and are war driven in the war machine and whatever you want to call it, get their way, we're going to have our American troops on the ground on something like this. That's unacceptable for one. For another is, is we need that money back and we would have 20 years of money sitting in the bank, approximately, roughly. If we got the dollars back from Ukraine that we've given them, we would literally be able to put an armed guard at every single school in the United States of America for almost 20 years. Do the math, figure it out. Think for your freaking self, people. Don't listen to the right-wing media or the left-wing media or a stupid idiot like myself. Go figure it out and go figure out what's going on and the truth behind, the honest truth behind these things that are happening. 
I'm tired of it, man. Mm -hmm. I'm truly tired of it when this kind of stuff happens and we see all this thing. The first thing that Joe Biden says, see, we should take care of these guns. Do take, uh, pass my bill. You know what? The laws are already there. They're there, man. Uh, let's talk about let's talk about Cain and Abel. Literally, there are historical facts that prove this kind of stuff happened. Whether you believe in Cain and Abel specifically or not, Cain killed Abel with a rock. Rocks are bad. Bad rocks. Bit later, David kills Goliath with a rock. Rocks are good. Arguably historical facts. More recent facts. Let's arm all of the citizens of Ukraine so they can fight back the Russians. Thank you. But Americans can have guns to protect yes. themselves from something like this. Yes. Does it's a bunch sense? of garbage. It's a bunch, bunch of disingenuous, power-hungry freaks on all sides. Mm -hmm. Enforce the laws we have, but most importantly, no. most importantly, no. mental health. I disagree health. with you. Don't enforce the laws that we have. Get rid of all the laws. Go back to the Second Amendment period, the law of the land that it should be, and we would have people like people we know that would have guns in school that would end this before a kid died, mm -hmm. period. Yep. Guns are not bad. No. People behind the guns are bad. Rocks are not bad. We had talked about knives yep. on a podcast. You remember that? Yes. And there are more people who are killed with knives in England than there are, are people in the United States with guns, including gun suicide. Mm -hmm. Go look it up. Yeah, the stats are out there. It's blunt not hard objects. To yes. More more people are murdered with blunt objects than are with rifles. Right. And look at the information that's out there and dissect it. When they talk about gun deaths, don't include gun suicides. That That's not an excuse or something to use as a crutch to push your gun control. No. You can't count things like that. Because if somebody wanted to kill themselves with a gun, they'll find something else to kill themselves with. Yes. The gun's a convenience. Yes. Same with something like this. They could drive a car or a semi through that school and kill kids. Yes. It's not the vehicle. It's not the weapon. It's like the 40 person. miles away from here, there was a semi that drove into a, a school. Remember mm -hmm. that a few years ago? Mm -hmm. Put a big old hole in the side of the building. Yeah. Purposeful or not, it happened. It's not, it's not the vehicle, whether it's a true vehicle or a weapon. It's the person. Yes. It's the mental health of that person. Let's talk about the mental health of, of this. <laughs> you know, we have all these people, you know, better mental health, better mental health. I think, he, you know, you use pound sand. I, I think pound sand's a good one in this this one as well. Um, what about uh, comorbidities? Now, follow me along here, people. Let's listen for a minute. Comorbidities was a huge thing for COVID. I'm going to get flagged for COVID just saying <laughs> that, right? Um, You'll get the disclaimer on the bottom of the video. Yeah, exactly. So we heard the comorbidities, comorbidities screamed for the last three years, right? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about comorbidities for mental health. Mm -hmm. I believe it's in the neighborhood of provably 70 some odd percent a trans person would have a, a mental health comorbidity. In other words, they would, would have been or are diagnosed with some type of clinical depression, some type of other um, depressions, other types of um, split personality disorders, and all kinds of stuff. The stats are there. I've looked at them. Okay. Um, you have those stats that you can look at. So there are all these other comorbidities to a person that identifies as a trans person. Just, just the facts. Okay. Objective. Yep, I'm catching. 42%, I believe it is, of a... No hate here. These are just the facts. 42% of a person who identifies as a trans person has attempted suicide. Not thought about it. It's not ideation. It's action. It's action. 42%. 
There is no other group in history. History. Slaves. Uh, slaves in Egypt way back then. Slaves in America. All these oppressed people. Poverty levels of any city. Um, uneducated people. Whatever it is. There has never been in history with that high of a percentage of attempted suicide. That's a pretty... pretty significant number again people go look i'm just this is opinion i've looked at these numbers i'm pulling these out of my head right now out of memory not out of just thin air but go look them up go study it go figure it out but i was like makes sense mm -hmm. i'm not going to disagree with that i and we've we've had the conversation about the transgender community and, and we don't need to rehash that but i think something like this you almost need to look beyond that and because oh you have to look beyond it, it right there's there's so much more that's the, than that, just the, the looking at program. this is it to me and i'm sorry to interrupt you again but the looking at this to me is the subjective mm -hmm. the opinion of the trans issues mm -hmm. And then there's the objective, the actual factual stance, look, view. Mm -hmm. They're 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 very different. Mm -hmm. and they always will be. And and there's a lot of chatter on social media right now about a big movement coming this weekend of of right. transgender aggression. And it's like just let people live their lives without hurting other people so so that's so my opinion right so there's there's some um fact checking going on about some photos and, and i'm not going to talk about this photos you and i both know what the photos are and i'm not going to talk about them right now but people can get the idea of these photos of um you know trans rights let's just call it that mm -hmm. right well i believe in the 60s wasn't that taken care of? Not sure about trans rights. Women's rights were taken care of. There, they have wasn't it, wasn't it human rights? I think that's what it was, yeah. Did it, all have, colors, anything, all did it have anything to do with color? Did it have anything to do with gender? Did it have anything to do with any of that? I believe it was humans. Mm -hmm. Yep. So this, this rights business with anything in front of it, other than human, disingenuous. Yeah. It's already on the books. It's already in law. Yep. And people the already being... people already fought the fight. They already protested. They already did the did the deal. And if your rights are violated, address it through the yep. court of law. Mm -hmm. But violence is not the answer. No. And going into a school and shooting innocent children is sure as hell not the answer. And 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 as soon as you know, man, as soon as they started so we could talk about, we could bring up factual things like the Colorado shooting trans. We could talk about some of these other shootings like, uh, uh, there are actually two Colorado ones, trans. Mm -hmm. We could, you know, we could talk about those things, right? I've, I've, I'm not a, I'm a bit of a moron. I'm not a complete moron, <laughs> right? I can look up these things and I know how to read. Seeing if we got a reaction from the board. Well, yeah, the, the board always reacts. <laughs> There's a massive difference between covering up what facts are in the subjective truth and an objective truth. Mm -hmm. And we have to stop this, this postmodernism philosophy of, of, you know, nobody's right, and nobody's wrong, essentially, is, is a bunch of garbage. And that's what this is a Marxist, communist, postmodernist philosophy that you can be whatever you want to be. You can't. I'm not smart enough to be a physicist. Pierce Morgan. I want to be, a, I identify as a black lesbian. Right. Pierce Morgan. Right. And the, the gal that he was arguing with was just stopped in her tracks. Yes. Why can't I identify as a black yeah. lesbian? Well, you're being ridiculous, he, she said. Well. Okay. <laughs> we've established that now. Dun, dun. <laughs> yeah. So. The...
It's been said for years, we're not coming after your kids. Boy, there's an oh, awful there lot of proof that you are. Yep. Awful we lot of proof that you are. Mm -hmm. Friends and family, I love you. I'm sorry that if you disagree with me, I'm sure I'm going to hear from some of you. But Deej died in a car crash. That was her fault. That's the truth. With honesty. We have to get back to that as society. We're done mm -hmm. if we don't. It will implode. Is that the plan? For some, it might be. I think it is. I, f I, f I feel looking at some of these things and reading these articles and looking at the, the, the different things in my lifetime, I feel like that is exactly the plan. I've read some books on the way some of these people think it's scary. literally i've read books on this type of thing and pushing people to this point that that's the plan that's the way to get things to change in your way who's pushing to take all the guns away mm -hmm. how do we push people to the point to make it safer if we take all the guns away. Right. What do we do? We lean in and we push hard in these certain places. Yep. It's over here, so it doesn't look like it's connected. But it's connected. I've read books on it. That's their plan. From a mentor of Barack Obama. <laughs> Seriously. Mm -hmm. It's no joke. It's no Joe Biden ice cream joke. That's, another, that's not even worth time on a podcast. No, the Joke. thing with that is, though, here's what's interesting to me. I'll, I'll, I'll close that loop from earlier. You, you have comedians that take real things and make jokes out of it, right? Mm -hmm. Or at least they'll make a joke to lighten up the lighten, real things right mood, yep. we have the president of the united states trying to make a joke and he keeps going and going and going he's not a comedian that's not his that's that's it's not his shtick and it's not his it's job. not a shtick for one but that's not what he was elected to do he wasn't elected to be a comedian no so 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 i'll say this connecting comedy with things that are tragic in life is a real thing by certain people by the right people yes this is where we need a strong leader yes not somebody trying to get a laugh track yes and what's even more disturbing is everybody in the crowd was laughing with them yeah That's and horrible. so so are there things wrong with is it wrong for him to make an ice cream joke no but then yes Correct. He's the president of the United States. He knew going into that that speech that it was going to change to this shooting. Mm -hmm. What would people have said if after 9-11 and President Bush stood on the steaming pile of metal from, nine, from the Twin Towers if he was making jokes about ice cream? Right. And this isn't the Twin Towers. By this the way, the, I, don't, I, don't care much, I don't care much for Bush, but it was just a... Or example the, or the beer i know um but <laughs> i know i'm just like and i'm not the bodies are still I'm trying to make a joke well, yeah right exactly <laughs> that's my point timing was way off and there's a time and a place to crack a joke and yeah. a press conference about six people that were just murdered in cold blood is not the place for that no kind of humor no premeditated we know the FBI is scrubbing everything they can find online about this person and their yeah. manifestos and everything else, which is also suspect. Very. Um, we we don't. My opinion is is we don't we don't need people in any way saying that this is a hate crime. In my opinion, this is all crime is hate against another human. In my opinion, so it's all the same. Mm -hmm. This is terrorism. 
Absolutely. And it's terrorism by the, the, the FBI's own definition. evil 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 it's... evil when i have to have a conversation with my six-year-old daughter about this at home i should never have had to have that conversation with her no no parent should ever have to have that conversation and no parent should ever be burying their nine-year-old because of some crazy psycho person exactly um I want to say I I just I, I look to confirm here there you know some of their um, trans rights thing I mean there's a lot of different things that you know one of them is trans rights or else you know there's all kinds of different things like that and they're they're protests quote unquote protests. Um, I'm trying to use softer gloves on this. Why? Well, so genocide, they're screaming trans genocide. Okay. Show me where the pits of where, dead where, bodies where, are. Where, where, where are where's the burial grounds here mm -hmm. have there been trans people who have been murdered probably probably and that's unfortunate and it's not right either no it's very wrong but th that doesn't two wrongs don't make it right no it doesn't mean and, you go shoot up Jen, school. do you know do you know what the Talk to the Jews about what genocide is. Yep. This, that's, that's my ultimate point about subjective and objective truth. You have to allow people to stand up and say, that's not true. Mm -hmm. And people are trying to take me down off of YouTube and demonetize me, quote unquote, I don't even flip and monetize. I've never even tried to. Because you don't agree with them. Exactly. Come up, come on the show and talk. Come and sit down face to face and give me a better idea. I'm not saying my ideas or opinions or commentaries or anything are are the way to go and they're they're quote unquote scripture but man nobody's nobody's face to face challenged me I mean you know you have other people have but my point <laughs> is is that that's not what they won't do that all they want to do is scream their talking points and scream it and scream it and scream it well it's my truth well it's not the truth there's a big difference. There's a massive difference. Mm -hmm. Go live your truth. Go buy your 100-acre farm or whatever you want to do and go live your truth with your five people. I travel the country every week, nearly every week. But you get the point. Yeah. That's what I do. I have contact with new people I've never met every single week by the dozens and dozens The percentage is tiny, beyond tiny. Mm -hmm. But we're changing but our we're, world to accommodate. Right. But we're going to talk about genocide in your community? Oh, <laughs> wow. Genocide, though, is a term that is, is a very That's wildly a specific, nasty term. Yeah. And, um, I mean, it's... That was a bad example. There, I there's there's for been very few times in history that that uh, that real true genocide has ever taken place. Yeah, and that's that's kind of my point. Is like it it's pretty obvious when it's genocide. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's and I shouldn't say pretty obvious. It's completely obvious. Yeah, 
and I don't know. I'm rambling a bit. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm worn out on this stuff. That um, I'm worn out on people saying that I'm I'm a I'm a bigot for one. I mean, man, the people that I interact with and the the people that I hate. I've, I, I can't think of anybody I've ever hated in my life. I might have said it. I hate you. <laughs> Probably my sisters or something when I was 10. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's justifiable usually. Um, but I don't hate people. I hate the actions. I hate um, You know, when they're unforgiving in the sense that they won't communicate to have a two-way communication Mm -hmm. we've we've sat and disagreed on many things civilly and um you know we've only punched each other a few times throwing pillows that's just the point is is that um if you have to get up in, in my opinion, if you have to get up and you have to holler and scream and you have to use all these words against everybody else and hate on everybody else, you're probably in a very bad place in your life, in your world, in your mental health. And then very much so in your mental health. Mm-hmm. I also think that you're in a very bad place if you can't sit down and have if you can't if, if you're a trans person and you can't sit down with a person who has detransitioned and have those conversations, somebody that maybe have has spent a lifetime. We could talk about Jazz Jennings. We could talk about yeah. I have all kinds of names that we could talk about. People that have detransitioned because it's 20 years into it or 10 years into it or five years into it. And every single one of them have said the trans community and the trans people, they won't have the conversations. And they will, and every single time, keep those conversations away from kids. They'll only allow kids to hear one side. Mm-hmm. Kids shouldn't hear it at all. No. (sighs) Can't fall back anymore. There's nowhere to fall back to. And at what point does everything turn around and get better? How bad do things have to get before they get better? Well, I think that people... I say this with as much humility as possible, but yet say it. I think before people like me, a, a, a working class idiot that says no, I think that's what it takes. I just, no, sorry, no. You wanna do your adult things? Mm, okay, maybe, I might sign up for that, maybe. But it's not that anymore. No. The the whole just just let us live and we'll let you live thing. That's fine. It doesn't exist anymore though. We no. see it over and over. Mm-hmm. It doesn't exist in the, it. Be, why? Because they're not being recognized. They're not being able to put. They're not being able to push their agenda down every single person's throat. And I, I mean, whatever that agenda is. I'm not talking about a trans agenda or a gay agenda or a lesbian agenda. I'm talking about whatever it is. The, the, these people that have to shove it down your throat and force feed you this kind of stuff. It's not a good agenda if that's what they have to do. And it's a terrible agenda if they have to force feed it on kids. And they start talking about how... Um, well, Florida's, uh, they're, they're doing book burnings because the governor of Florida is banning books. But you know what? They got mad for the governor of Florida for posting pornography on his social media accounts. Well, you know what? That pornography is what they were putting in the hands of little kids. That's what he posted. 
So you can't have it both ways. No. You can't have it any way, in fact, when it comes to kids. No, let the parents parent the kids. Parents have to parent the kids. On another episode. Yes. Should we wrap it up? Sure. I'm getting like I'm getting all fired up. Ah! Sorry. Not sorry. Open your mind. Read. Look. Don't go on CNN and Fox and Newsmax. And I mean, I have this argument with really close. Well, but Fox said, but CNN. Really? Really? You're going to listen to what those bozos say on both sides of it? Everybody, they, they all have agendas. You know what those agendas are? To pad their freaking pockets with money. They're getting you sucked into it. Stop. There's enough out there, enough people out there that have some good information. You have to, it sucks that you have to sift through it, but but don't put your Ukraine flag up because, well, the Ukrainian people, yeah, what's going on there? I don't know. It's bad. I'm not there. I don't know how bad. But the point is, is unless you're willing to go put your feet on the ground, figure it out, look at it, stop being swayed by ideologies like you are. Enough said. <laughs>